welcome to the CPC On Demand Learning Series. The topic for this presentation is Change is a Team Activity. I'm Dr. Russell Cole, Medical Director for TMF Health Quality Institute. The speaker for this presentation are from Mercy Family Medicine of Durango, Colorado. This practice of 22 providers is part of the larger Centura system, which spans several states and is located near the Four Corners area, touching Arizona, Colorado, New Mexico, and Utah. The practice is 17,000 patients come from communities in all four states. Today, we'll hear from the Clinical Performance Coordinator, Tamara Lavengood, and the Practice Administrator, Chris Gardine. Hello, I'm Tamara Lavengood, and I'm here with Chris Gardine, our Practice Administrator. At Mercy Family Medicine, we believe change starts with ideas from all staff members and a vision from leadership. All ideas go to our practice quality team, which has members from every level and area of our practice. This group was established in November of 2012, initially as a CBCI task force, and members from this task force formed our quality team in July of 2013. We knew we needed to have processes developed for change to take place, and that is the role of this team. When ideas for change come forth, we explain the why of the proposed change to them, and then let them know it is an option and not a demand. The team then takes ownership of it. The quality team designs the PDSAs and change projects based on the needs of the practice. Quality meetings occur every other week, and the meetings are open to any and all staff. Some people are there for every meeting, others come and go when there's a topic or area of interest. We document all meeting notes using the PDSA format and use this to document our quality work. It is very important to obtain buy-in from providers and staff at all levels. Often if you have one provider and a team agree to try something, their success helps others to be more open to the change. As it spreads, support is created. We encourage rather than dictate. No one wants to be told what to do. Tamara, who's a master's prepared RN, coordinates all of our CPC efforts. She's not a supervisor and doesn't evaluate staff. She's worked in their shoes occasionally, filling in when needed, and she recognizes and appreciates the staff's hard work on all of our changes. An example of a very successful change that came from staff's suggestions was the formation of teams in our office. Seven of our best MAs came forward and requested we form teams. They expressed they were not happy with the current flow of work and felt it was ineffective. They met with an RN from Centura Health Physician Group who listened to them and helped them develop a plan to deal with their concerns. This group of MAs then presented the plan to our leadership group who listened, then encouraged and empowered them to put their plan into place. This group of medical assistants then presented the plan to staff and initiated it. The rollout was much easier than if it had come from the top. It really helped with staff buy-in. The process of having the medical assistants not only bring the idea forward, but also implement it really helped them understand what it takes to implement various changes. It also helped with their buy-in on subsequent changes as well. As part of a large system, we are fortunate to receive data monthly to help us on our journey. This data includes 19 clinical quality measures at the provider level, meaningful use measures, and press gainy results. We use this data to drive change as well as track improvements as we change. We discuss the data in this report monthly with the leadership group, which includes the medical director and our practice administrator, Chris Gardine, and the supervisors at Mercy Family Medicine from both the business area and nursing staff. The data helps us identify which teams or providers are struggling, as well as recognize what areas overall need to be looked at as potential areas of improvement. We then review this report with the quality team so that they can identify what to work on. The report is also posted for the staff to review. Oftentimes when the staff review it, they can then be quite competitive as they initiate improvement. We are involved in several initiatives, including the state innovation model, the recognition as a level three PCMH, and the advanced care planning initiative is in the works in collaboration with our community. So we streamline the workflows, and then we can identify where there is overlap and where the work will count on more than one initiative. With this approach, taking on another initiative or project or change doesn't have to be seen necessarily as more work. 
We identify where we can get our biggest bang for our buck by combining our focus on quality measures that may impact two or more areas. One thing we like to do is get creative with giving rewards. If you're doing excellent work, you should get credit for it. We can see where the rewards are deserved as we document the work we are doing and look at the changes that have occurred. We reward staff in various ways. We give out coffee cards, gift cards, and have staff celebrations on birthdays or anniversaries of employment. We also have staff parties, like summer barbecues, that allow staff to get to know each other on a more personal level. We create healthy, positive competition among the staff in the office. With one large change, we gave the teams plans for their work areas as they succeeded. This demonstrated to everyone that that particular team met with success when you saw their plan. We recognize, recognize, recognize. We do this at meetings in front of their peers or in emails to all staff. It means a lot to staff to know that they are seen as essential in the change journey. Here at Mercy Family Medicine, we try to create a positive culture of change and improvement through engagement of staff and servant leadership. Who better understands how change impacts the day-to-day -day work than the people doing the work? We keep them involved in helping to determine what will work best. Leadership provides the tools needed to accomplish the task at hand. We remove the barriers so staff can make the necessary changes. We lead by example at every opportunity. It wasn't always this way. This is a culture shift. It empowers, sparks imagination, and employee satisfaction. A good example is our press gainy score response. We used to get these reports and only heard about the negative responses in them. Our current practice administrator, Chris, takes a different approach and focuses on the positives in the report. The entire practice then made a shift and worked on improving even more. Some of our largest projects and improvements have led to increased staff satisfaction, including the creation of work teams, the development of the risk stratification method, and the high-risk ER and hospital admission follow-up. We measure staff satisfaction by employee surveys. We also look at how these changes impact what the patients think. We can look at patient satisfaction on our Press Ganey scores, but also by other means, such as comments from our PFAC, conversations with patients, and letters from our patients. Our integration of RN care coordinators to help with the emergency department and hospital follow-ups was one of our most successful changes. We undertook this improvement project in 2013. We initially met with hospital discharge planners, hospital social workers, and emergency department staff. We developed a diagram for the workflow of the process. We met regularly to revise this diagram as necessary. The result was that on a daily basis, the practice RN care coordinators, which was a new role using CPC funds, print off the hospital admission and discharge summary. Then they visit patients in the hospital that are being discharged that day. They arrange for a follow-up appointment with the primary care provider, then document it in the EHR, which is then printed on the discharge summary so the patient has a record of their appointment. The RN care coordinators then call the patient once they are home for follow-up as needed. The RN care coordinators also run a list of emergency department discharges daily and triage them. For complicated visits or high-risk patients, they follow up personally and arrange the needed care. For all other emergency visits, a message is sent to the care team who follows up with the patient. The entire team is then involved in helping the patient. Patients love this personal touch. Staff are thrilled that they are connecting with the patients when they need it the most. As a primary care practice, we know that if we're to continue the pace of change, we need to create and share a strong vision with our providers and staff. We have to have positive framing. We're at an exciting crossroads in healthcare, transitioning from volume-based model to a value-based model. We would rather be a part of creating the change than having the change pushed upon us. We do our best to highlight our accomplishments and successes. For example, we were one of the first three practices in all of Centura Health to become patient-centered medical home recognized. This really helps motivate everyone to continue with the changes of CPC and other major transformative work. If I were to offer my colleagues some tips on maintaining the momentum of change, it would be first to have patience. There will be failures, but keep trying. Second, recognition. 
everyone needs to be recognized for the good work that they're doing. Third, to be sure to have leadership involvement, visibility, and support during the process. And finally, open, honest, and frequent communication with everyone involved. Communication is the tie that binds us together during our change journey. Before we conclude this learning activity, I'd like to revisit some of the key points from Tamara and Chris's talk. One of the most important roles of practice leadership is developing a unified vision for the practice that can be shared across the entire team. While every level of the organization is required to achieve that vision, it's critical that leadership be able to establish a clear, unifying vision for all staff. While leadership may set the vision for the practice, it really does require a team approach to implement that vision. I think it's great to recognize the medical assistance role in quality improvement at Mercy Family Medicine. As the people who make up the front line of patient care in many instances, it's critical that their voice be heard as systems are designed and workflows are laid out. Following that theme, team and provider buy-in really is a critical aspect to the success of any quality improvement effort. No matter how well designed a project may be, if those who are implementing it simply don't buy into the value of the project, its success is far from assured. It's particularly important to recognize informal leadership within the practices. While they may not hold official positions of responsibility, there are certainly thought leaders within each clinic who are important to recognize. The buy-in of those individuals is just as influential as corporate leadership if quality improvement efforts are going to be successful. One of the great things that Mercy discussed was the idea of using data from all of your data sources to target your efforts. While certainly a variety of data sources are available, be it from EHRs, from payer reports, or from vendors like Press Ganey, I think what's really important in Mercy's performance is that they've been able to identify these data sources and use them to actually target their efforts. Just as we identify a holistic approach to a patient to look beyond any one individual number as the deciding factor, Mercy really has been able to do that within their practice to identify where they should be targeting their quality improvement efforts. An area frequently overlooked in quality improvement is the alignment of quality improvement efforts. We can all think back to assorted projects that have had spectacular short-term results but have not been sustainable. Many of the times, this is related to failure to align those efforts with other ongoing activities. By looking at the different efforts that are currently underway, either by assorted payers within the practice or through community quality initiatives, we're able to identify the areas where they may actually overlap. Many times in quality improvement, there are discussions of culture change or culture shift, and this is approached from a variety of different ways. I really do think it's important to stress that culture shift is something that's accomplished by demonstration. It isn't something that you can hand out a book or have a seminar and the practice culture changes. This really is an area where it's important to demonstrate the behavior that you want the practice to emulate. Many efforts around care coordination or care management begin with the emergency department interface. Certainly it's a high yield area, and I think one of the great things that Mercy Family Medicine has described in their program is an iterative approach. While they were very interactive with the emergency department in identifying what they felt might be an optimal process, they didn't hesitate to iterate that process and to adapt it over time to things that were going to be more effective. I think that really is an important aspect of any quality improvement, is to recognize that the documentation of the system is not the goal. The goal is the improvement of the system, and the documentation of it simply facilitates our ability to change it to a more efficient future state. Thank you for joining us today for Change as a Team Activity. We hope the lessons shared by Mercy Family Medicine will be useful to you as you pursue your optimal medical practice and that you will take the time to watch the other videos in this on-demand series.